but yeah, the Dark Knight, it's just, there's so much you can say about it. There's so much stuff we haven't even touched on that is in this film. And yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay, well, I think we've really sort of just gone berserk with the, and, and like you said, there are so much stuff you can pick up on. So, what would you say, final thoughts? Okay, now, obviously, all the praise I've given it, I still do prefer um, Batman Begins as a film, because to me, that really felt like a Batman film. This one, you know, as I've said, some of the aesthetic changes, and, you know, it's arguably that Batman's not at the forefront of the film. Um some of the problems I had with the film are quite... It's quite nitpicky, but there's a few inconsistencies I have with the film. Um, the first is Batman's method of taking people out in this film. There's a scene where Batman storms into a nightclub to get um, the crime boss Salvatore Moroni. And to me, that scene just comes right the hell out of nowhere. And I think it would have benefited the film if maybe he'd waited till he goes outside into an alley or something and then Batman swoops down and catches him. Um, 152 minutes long some people could say this is overly long and I do think towards the beginning of the film there are a few pacing issues like mm. the whole Lao going to Hong Kong I, I think that could have been cut down or cut out of the film entirely or just had Batman meeting him on the plane and just taking him there rather than setting up the whole Hong Kong visit um, there's the scene where the Joker storms Bruce Wayne's fundraiser party and then after Batman saves Rachel after she's been thrown out the window, it just cuts and did the Joker just leave? Did Batman go up to fight the Joker? It's just little things like that just sprinkled through the film. But if I was recommending this film, if you want just a generic superhero film for Batman, this probably isn't the film for you because... At 152 minutes long, it is quite based in these moral dilemmas and ethical problems that you could um, mirror into modern life. And it is very much a character study of yeah. all of these characters. And if you just want to see Batman fight a new villain in an action sequence, then I'd probably go with the Tim Burton films or something along the lines of those because this this really is completely different in every aspect of those films. But as a film, Dark Knight is pr probably one of the best films ever made if you're looking at it from a complete, you know, filming and quality of writing standpoint and direction. You know, Christopher Nolan's my favourite director of all time and he's really brought a new outlook to Batman, especially in this film, and that's what yeah. I like about the film. Yeah. I, I I would say much the same, and I know there are nitpicky problems, but I I, I would say that overall this this is in terms of um in in terms of a superhero m movie is 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 a sort of masterpiece in in the in the genre because of the ideas it presents, because of the way the story is told, because of the action and how well it's shot, and Wally Fister, the cinematographer, doesn't pulls pulls his big guns out and just goes for it the stunts are amazing the choreography is brilliant and one of my one of my favorite bits where the where they flip over the truck that could have gone so horribly wrong but <laughs> it, it 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 was it was fantastic to watch and, and practical effects and as well practical effects this is where none of this well i mean there were miniatures used in the in the underground sort of chase sequence, but CGI was relatively kept to a minimum, and that's how films should be. And it's interesting to see a film like Ter um, Terminator 3, which had a truck flip in it, done completely with computers. And I mean, yeah. I don't know if it was the same when you went to see this film, but that truck flip got a complete gasp and the look on everyone's faces was perfect because it was practical effects. It was really there. Someone actually rigged that thing up to flip a truck. Yeah, and that that's what I... And you can get into the whole thing about practical, practical effects versus computer effects. And I, I'm under the impression that nothing will trump practical effect because you get that same 
you get that reaction because it's real because they they actually did that whereas cgi it's programmed into a computer in terms of how an audience sees it there's not much thought going into the the cgi or how an audience looks at the cgi but if it's really there and it's really happened and they and they see it they know it's not cgi then it creates a different reaction and practical effects will trump special effects any day in terms of in in films like this in action films like this but yeah that's that's my opinion i think it is masterfully um christopher nolan's best one of his best films uh it's certainly up there with uh, memento and actually actually i'd put it as as the best film he's done that that's how i would look at it and that's how I, that's where i'd put it and and you know that's me that's my opinion on it so i've i've said my piece on that and i really love it uh, i think i've said my piece as well i mean we've talked this film to death and as i said if if you haven't watched this film by now you know definitely watch it there is so much that we haven't touched on in this film and it it's worth as i said multiple viewings are needed for this film so be prepared to sit through this 152 minute long film a number of times and yeah that's really all i can say about it really and i will be watching both batman begins and the dark knight when before i go and see the dark knight rises and that that will be out friday tomorrow uh, the tomorrow, tomorrow the, the 20th of july yep the 20th of july in the uk and you know we'll we'll do we'll get that review to you and boy am i looking forward to that me too it's good it's i hope it's going to be great it, it's got a lot of hype <laughs> to live up to and you know some would argue to top the dark knight is no small feat but if there's anyone that can do it it's christopher nolan yep and he's he has proved that with this and he's proved that with inception and he's proved that with a number of other films so that is the end of the Bat Marathon. It's been a, a tough ride. We've had mostly subpar Batman films, um, but I would I would say we've had more bad Batman films than good. But the good ones make up for the bad. And at least we ended on the high note. Yes, at least we ended on a high note. Well, thanks very much for watching the Bat Marathon, and you know we hope to see you again for our future film reviews and our future marathons we've we've got planned. So, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thank you.